Good morning, I'm Pam Dawkins and I'm joined by Undersecretary Richard Stingle. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your time. Wanted to talk to you about the State Department efforts to counter violent extremism. And of course, this is going to be a big issue at the, on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. What's going to be the message at UNGA? Well, the message at UNGA is a follow-up to the President's summit on countering violent extremism that the White House had last year, I believe in February. And since that time, we've been very, very focused on it. And violent extremism, as you know, is a global problem. In fact, it's an increasingly global problem. So the idea is that the president wants to convene world leaders to really focus on this at UNGA. And so there's a, a kind of more kinetic aspect to it, which is focusing on anti-ISIL, and then there's a larger, broader effort, which we call CVE, Countering Violent Extremism, which has all kinds of manifestations, education, civil society, media. So that, that, that it will be a very broad focus. Specifically, what are some of the aspects that you hope to um, discuss with countering violent extremism in meetings with heads of states from other countries, and how do you hope to use this as a follow-up to the president's earlier initiative? Well, again, one of the sets of, of things that we're focused on is the globalization of ISIL, or Daesh, as we call it, which is the Arabic name. So there will be conversations with uh, world leaders in those countries where, where ISIL is actually uh, growing um, and, and are, are creating their own kind of markets there. So that's one thing. Then there's the, the kind of, again, not softer so much, but the, but the kind of countering violent extremism that has to do with educational exchanges, with programs where we deal with uh, people who are returning back to their community, former fighters, uh, the rehabilitation of, of young men and women who may have actually gone and fought for an extre extremist group. So it, it runs that whole gamut of, of hard to soft. Are you seeing any success in efforts to counter violent extremists in the U.S. social media campaigns, which you mentioned there had been some initial criticism that some of the U.S. campaigns may have been having the opposite effect? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that's under me as Undersecretary for Public Diplomacy is the Center for Strategic Counterterrorism Communications, which was set up under Secretary Clinton to counter al-Qaeda messaging, and then it morphed into a, a full-time counter ISIL messaging machine. And as you mentioned, ISIL is very sophisticated in social media, but actually I think the, the, the scales are shifting. I mean, if you look at what the, the volume of messaging that they are doing, and not just U.S. messaging to counter it, but messaging by Muslims around the world, that share is actually growing. So I actually always say that, that we're not the best messenger for our message. Obviously, a lot of people who are attracted to ISIL are anti-US, so part of what we do at CSCC is to enlist third-party groups, uh, non-governmental organizations, other media businesses to, to balance that noxious flow of messaging that comes from ISIL. One of the things that you were involved in was in July you launched the Sawab Counterterrorism Center in Abu Dhabi. Um, the focus is on countering, of course, the propaganda from the Islamic State. How is that doing? Uh, it's doing well. It was a, it's a big signpost in, in our counter-ISIL campaign. It's a joint effort between the uh, United Arab Emirates and the U.S., the Sawab Center. Sawab is Arabic for the right path. And it, this is part of our strategy, which is not to focus on American versus ISIL messaging. That isn't the ball game. It's the whole rest of the Islamic world versus ISIL. So we want to create a network of networks of different hubs, the first of which is the Sawab Center. So they have about more than 10,000 followers. Uh, they're on you know, many, many tweets and pieces of social media every day, and they're gaining uh, attention and followers even as we speak. This is a relatively new effort, but are there any indications that um, the center has been having success in uh, helping stem the flow of foreign fighters into Iraq and Syria, also helping to counter some of the messages that the Islamic State has been sending out, especially those targeting yeah. young people? I think there's a kind of false correlation between messaging and the flow of foreign fighters. Is, is messaging important to, to uh, their brand? Yes. Is, are, is a tweet going to take a nice young man who's living in Tunisia and make him decide to go to, and fight in Iraq and Syria? I don't think so. So I, we don't look at so much as, as, as the media war as a real war to prevent 
foreign fighters. It's, it's more about the share of market. At the same time, you know, we are trying to reach individual people with a message that says ISIL's message is all wrong. So, for example, we have a campaign that we're doing with Sawab this very week during UNGA, uh, the, the defectors campaign, which is using direct testimony from dozens and dozens of young men and women who have come back from Iraq and Syria and said, the caliphate is a myth. Uh, you know, I was abused there. Uh, they're not religious. Uh, they're venal and money grubbing. So, so that type of campaign to refute their disinformation is the kind of thing that we're doing. What do you look at? How do you measure the success of those campaigns? If, if, if you don't base it on the flow of foreign fighters, mm -hmm. um, what do you do to measure the impact and the success? Well, that it's, you know, in, in many ways, it's, a, it's almost a traditional media campaign. I come from a media background. I mean, you measure engagement. You, you measure trajectory. You measure uh, the number of followers. You measure how long people stay online. You look at what they do after uh, they look at, at your social media. So. Um, it, it's very hard to actually, as I was saying before, correlate something in messaging with, with the flow of foreign fighters. But for example, what we have seen this summer, we've seen a, a, a sharp decline in the volume of ISIL messaging and social media. I, I can't tell you exactly why. I'd love to say that it, it's because of what the Sawab Center is doing and what we're doing, and, but I don't know, but it's a good sign. The Sawab Center was initially set up to be a hub with a goal of establishing other centers around the world. Mm -hmm. um, where, where is the U.S. with that effort? Are there other centers that are set to come online soon? There are, and I think you'll hear some announcements about that at UNGA. I don't want to uh, uh, preview something that's not my uh, place to announce, so I, I think you'll see some announcements by some of our partners and allies about messaging centers that they're going to start. There's been some criticism from lawmakers that the U.S. response um, in terms of its social media messages have been ineffective um, in that they don't seem to target the teens and the young adults that are often targeted by militants. What's your response to that? Well, my response without, without being um, uh, frivolous about it is that what they don't seem to understand is that it's not U.S. versus ISIL messaging. It's Muslims around the world versus ISIS messaging. 95% of the ISIL messaging is in Arabic. I'm not so sure how many of our uh, men and women in Congress read social media in Arabic. So that, the battle is in Arabic. They're looking at the handful of English social media that we do, which is a tiny percentage of what CSCC does and an even tinier percentage of what the messaging centers around the world and third parties are doing. So, so I'm happy to have a conversation with a congressman, you know, who is aware of what's going on in Arabic media. Could you talk a little bit more about what the third parties are doing? You mentioned that earlier. So there's uh, uh, there are so many different places that are rising uh, around the world. There, uh, there's the Rapid Messaging Center in uh, Jordan. There's a Al-Iftar, the Rapid Messaging Center in Egypt. The Saudis are doing a great deal. Uh, there's the Hadaya Center in Abu Dhabi that is a, a larger CVE effort. These are places which I think a lot of people in in the, in, our, in the American Congress don't have visibility on, which I think is worth knowing about. And I think as more and more people and more and more Muslims around the world become revulsed and repulsed by what ISIL is doing, you'll still see the, the flow of social media just increasing and increasing until it completely drowns out their messages. This is a relatively new effort, but are there any early indications on what social media tool, if any, is most effective? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? What, what seems to be your most effective tool? You know, tool? it's a very good question, but, but I think it points to a kind of misconception about how people become radicalized. There really is no such thing as a lone wolf. If you look at the stories that have been in the New York Times or the Washington Post about ISIL poaching uh, young men and women, it's not social media. It's actually personal contact and very, very focused social media email, telephone calls, et cetera, on that one person. Nobody is radicalized single-handedly by watching a YouTube video. So, so one of the things that, that we've seen is we have to try to interrupt that flow. That's the use of intelligence services. That's the use of, of law enforcement. And what a lot of people, American legislators, are concerned about is this a lone wolf phenomenon in America. Um, but that, again, is not only part of that is social media. A lot of that is law enforcement, et cetera. And one of the things that we've seen about ISIL, if you look at them around the world, 
social media is just the tip of the iceberg of what they do. They do billboards, they do kiosks, they do flyers, they have a magazine called Dabiq. So it's not just social media. We focused a lot on ISIL, but of course countering violent extremism is broader than the Islamic State. What other militant groups are you focused on, and, and generally speaking, what's being done to counter what's coming from those, or, those groups? Well, the, uh, you, as a government effort, we're focused on Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab. We've been giving money and, and aid to those countries that are directly affected by them. Uh, we're trying to interrupt their messaging as well. CSCC is in five or six different languages. So as, as ISIL and counterviolent extremism go into if different areas, we're trying to be in there as well in those languages. So it's something that we're very much aware of and, and something that we're working on. Thank you. Great. Thank you.